Marvin, I think you uh, received this packet. Carter, I don't. Uh, oh, you got. Yeah. He's got one now. So you guys are uh, in receipt of a list of uh, items, uh, responsibilities of board members, and uh, Marvin, were you able to turn that in? Back here. Turn in the uh, list that we were. Why don't we just get the form so we can specifically show him what we're talking about? Those that I Carter, can I have yours? <laughs> can I have yours? So we can show it to Martin. Oh, no, there are extras in there? Is it in this pack? No. I. I well, wait a minute. Yeah, I no, I handed it to you when you came into the office. Okay, I lost it. Now, we don't have to uh, have it, but it's good to acknowledge Board it. Board of Directors Agreement. Here we go. Your next one, Carter? Yep, I've got okay, it. Okay, great. Everybody, really, everybody needs to sign it. Because right. this has got the conflict of interest statement in it. So everybody needs to sign it. I've got extra copies. In addition to this, the new board members uh, need to come in. There's some uh, check signing uh, requirements and, and uh, things like that. that I would encourage you guys to uh, visit with Maybeth and get those signatures and uh, sign the, the forms. So we'll give everybody a minute to read over this form and then uh, turn it back. I agree to abide by the code of ethics, the bylaws, and the applicable state and federal law and the performance of my duties as a board member. Is that the one your question? Yeah, I'm just, I've not seen the code of ethics, so I would like to see it before I agree to follow it. Tell you what, why don't you uh, scratch that and put the right reference in there, Marvin? And uh, if you have no problem following that code of conduct, then we can move on to your next one. Okay. Uh, that's agreeable. Well, okay, but this particular document says draft. Is it a draft of a future document? Or yeah. What is it? As I mentioned at the last board meeting, the draft part is codifying it into a board policy manual. What is Article 12 was adopted uh, 
quite a few years ago is a policy statement by the board, and all we're trying to do is put them in an organized fashion, uh, numbered by groups. But the code of conduct has been around for some 20 years. It is adopted by a policy statement by the board. So the only thing that's draft about it is this organization of it into a policy manual and renumbering it from policy statement number 27 into article 12 so that it fits in a section with other board provisions. Hey John, could we just, uh, instead, I mean, because if it's a draft document, can we go back to the original document and would you read that aloud? And then uh, Marvin can make a notation on his and we can, uh, you can you can do it by that, which is not a draft. Greg, if don't speak up, you can't hear anybody here. Um, do you, you guys want to move up? There's seats up here at the front. We're back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, what uh, what this says is code of conduct and conflict of interest. Twenty one point oh two board members. In the event that a board member of the board of directors has a material interest in many in a matter coming before the Board of Directors for approval, that director shall disclose the interest and abstain from any participation in discussion or voting on the matter. That's a far cry different than what it says here, Code of Ethics. So would you like me to cross out Code of Ethics and write in that number? Code of Conduct. Code of Conduct, we can do that, okay. All right. But Marvin, this is why we gave it to you about three weeks ago um, to, to have the time to go through it. But, well, if um, you'd like to move on, I can sit and go through no, this. We'll, we'll go ahead. What's the next one you have a uh, question about? Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four from the bottom. I agree to keep matters discussed in the executive session as provided by law strictly confidential. Uh, it would be nice if we quoted the law there. Which law are you talking about? Uh, chapter 209 of the Texas. Chapter 209 of the Texas Property Code that governs executive sessions of POA boards. It is the law that we're talking about. And it, speci it, specifies it specifies four or five issues. It speci specifies four or five things that can occur in executive sessions, yes. But I don't believe it says it has to be kept confidential. It's well, generally as a director for a nonprofit organization, you have a fiduciary duty to act in the best interest or of the organization, and that would be keeping things that are deemed confidential by the organization confidential. Uh, that's just basic corporation obligation to the director of a for-profit or nonprofit corporation. Yeah, I can agree with that, certainly, but it doesn't say that. Can you hear me? I think about it, but you know we don't want to get into a bind sometime with some of our folks being uh, not following the fiduciary duty because they don't understand what the law is. I would, I would agree with you. Uh, do you want to pencil Chapter 209 in the Texas Property Code in here to clarify? Yeah, it's 209.0051. Okay. Anything else? Well, I would recommend that everybody do that because if you don't, you're... I've got it right here. And then finally, this is really odd. I agree not to disclose or discuss differences of opinion on the board outside of board meetings. Could you lend some clarification to that? So if Brett and I have a disagreement Ryan comes up to me and says, well, what's Brent's opinion on this? I'm supposed to go, I can't say? Yep. But then where you would say, talk to Brent about that, as opposed to uh, talking about other board members. It's, it's just... Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty common in corporations that uh, you do that. And then further, I believe, in Robert's Rules and Borders, there's some uh, discussion in... Uh, if, if a board member, or actually any, any member of the organization, uh, states damaging statements or does things for political gain or anything like that, that that's grounds for removal. So I, I don't have uh, Robert's rules in front of me, but I'm sure we can kind of do that. Well, 
I'm going to have to uh, do a little homework on that particular one. Okay. But I'd just like to uh, I, I'm I'm fine with turning mine in if you'll pass it down to make that. Anybody else that has any objections, I would encourage you guys to uh, do what you need to do to feel comfortable with signing that document and uh, we'll conduct business moving forward. Just for the record, Brent, I believe the other everybody else's uh, initial design and turning the way back. Okay. Point of order. Thank you. That's Sounds like you're so, giving everybody sorry, your you're, individual. You're I think I called point so, order. This is a board meeting. Uh, there is a membership can call point of order under the rules. No, sir. Okay. Any any conflict of interest statements? We move past that. Um, Marvin, if you would uh, clarify. Just, just a question. If you have a conflict of interest and the board feels it's significant, what can be done about it? Well, uh, if, you, if you're throwing out a hypothetical, I, I, don't, I don't know what can be done about it, but if you want to put something specific, maybe we can talk about that. I can well, tell you, if you're on a cheap or lie, um, well, no. then you can be fired or uh, put in jail. Um, but what, what hypothetical situation would you like to talk about? Well, I'm not talking about a hypothetical one. I'm asking okay. whether, if there's a significant conflict of interest, what would the board do about it? What can be done? Is there a procedure to follow? Is there a law? Let's John, there's you want to weigh in on this? Leslie's going to answer the question there. Marvin? Yes, ma'am. As in any situation, in any business or any organization, if there's a particular conflict of interest, that conflict of interest has to be addressed. Let's take, for example, the one that was presented tonight. If for some reason this board felt like that there was some issue with that conflict of interest, then we could do things like order a committee to look at the contract that we have to see whether or not it's significant enough. We could talk about whether or not that employee uh, or board member or whatever had an proprietary that uh, disciplinary action would be called for. There are varying degrees of what what could happen. We have to take each case on a case by case basis based on what that conflict of interest is. Okay, so there's no set procedure. It's on a case by case basis what the board wants to do. Is that the answer? It's on a case by case basis based on what the circumstances are, as in any business organization. Okay, thank you. That's the answer. Every situation is different. If it's an employee with a conflict, we have a procedure for handling that. And if the employee reports it to the board meeting, the board makes a decision whether or not any action is taken. It's the case of the underbring. If it is a board member with a conflict of interest, the procedure is that that board member is required to abstain and not participate in anything having to do with that particular matter. If for some reason the board member refuses to do that, there are procedures in the bylaws for removal of the person as a board member. So there are procedures for everything. It's just a little bit broad to say, what do we do in cases of conflict of interest? It depends on whether it's an employee, a board member, the executive coordinator, or a member of the committee or volunteer. We have different and procedures. I, I think yeah, I understood. Is there, is there a procedure in the uh, board policy manual Yes, it's in that code of conduct. It has specific provisions, really specific provisions okay. for directors, for the executive coordinator, for volunteers, for staff members. And in the bylaws, it has provisions on removing a director. And removals can be for cause, and they can also be under certain circumstances without cause. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, Marvin, there's some Robert rules of order that um, the organization refers to quite often. In and there are um, remedies in there. Um, but I think the, the reason that, that the uh, conflict of interest statements are, is on the agenda um, over the last few months, actually the last year we've talked about this, and the idea is to avoid conflicts of interest. So if there are um, <coughs> that are declared, then we can take uh, actions to um, not, not go down there. So that's it. Thank you.
Right. Uh, we'll be using public comment. Starry, starry night.